first words are always exciting for parents and grandparents. And first words when you meet someone, last, ones, last words when you depart are all very important. So when I heard that Father Peter was coming and learned that in Tanzania they speak the best Swahili, I asked one of our parishioners from Kenya who speaks Swahili, how would I greet Father when I meet him at the airport? We've never spoken on the phone, we've never seen one another, we've only had an email. Uh, and he's on his way, traveling his 10,000 mile journey. What word should I use? And it was an easy one. One word, jambo. Not jumbo, but jambo. So when I greeted Father about 11 o'clock at night, a few nights ago, as he came through the doors at the Albuquerque airport, and I said, jambo, Father Peter, hoping I had the right person, he had a big shock and a smile at this American greeting him in Swahili. Now, if you know Swahili, please practice it with Father, because that's the only word I know. <laughs> first words are important. Think about the first words of your child, the very first words that the child... Most parents wanted to be mama or daddy, right? So there was this one child that the parents were waiting to hear the first word and it was their boy with other boys, older boys, and his first word was, let go. <laughs> they were pulling on his blanket. Another one, the parents were so interested to see what their sweet little girl was going to say after the dad kept practicing dada and the mom was practicing mama with the little girl. And her first word was, Bob, the name of their dog. And then there was this couple where the wife was always telling the husband to put the garbage out. It was always telling. So there the little toddler is at the kitchen table and dad's walking into the kitchen and the first words from his lips were, garbage out. <laughs> and that is today's gospel. Garbage out. Think about it. What were the first words in the first sermon we hear from John the Baptist? Repent. Now you go to the next chapter in the gospel and Jesus is preaching his first sermon. What was his first word? Repent. Then you go on and look at the first sermon of St. Peter and the other apostles. First word? Repent. So we should take that word rather seriously. And it really is a call to examine our lives and turn them around. What's the first word we hear from God? The very first word we hear from God in the Bible. Go all the way back to the book of Genesis. And the first you hear is, let there be light. And God separated the darkness from the light. There was light. In other words, we have to get the darkness out of our lives. Get the, the garbage out in order to prepare for the coming of the Lord. St. Paul, in his magnificent letter to the Romans that we hear from today in chapter 15, puts it this way. We who are strong, and he's speaking about strong in faith, ought to bear with the failings of the weak, not to please ourselves, but let each of us please his neighbor for his good, edify him. In other words, we have a mission in this world to edify our neighbor, to lift the neighbor up, that labor that may be walking through a valley of darkness and needs our encouragement. He continues, Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. And may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another. To live in harmony, in unity. You remember the great Italian artist 
and Renaissance genius Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo was working on one of his great paintings, and it happened to be one of Christ. And one day, as he picked up his brush to continue his work on the canvas, Leonardo had the painter's cramp. We talk about the writer's cramp, right? When you're stuck and you can't write anything else. Well, this happens to artists as well. He couldn't make another stroke on the canvas. So Leonardo put his brush down, reflected for a moment, and he left his studio to go and greet a man with whom he had had a very serious argument. Leonardo apologized to that man. They were reconciled, and Leonardo went back to his studio. He picked up the brush, and he was able to continue painting the face of Christ. He knew that he could not reveal the face of Christ when on the inside he had resentment and anger. St. Magdalene of Canossa tells us we are to make Jesus known and loved in the world. If you and I have garbage on the inside that we haven't dealt with, that we haven't cleaned out, darkness must be overcome by the light, or we will never be able to welcome Jesus into our souls. That is what Advent is about. It is about welcoming Jesus. I was able to greet Father Peter at our airport, a man I have never met, never spoken with, and receive him as my brother, because we know we are Christians. We are brothers by virtue of our baptism. And so I welcome him as my brother. If I have garbage in my soul, I'm going to have difficulty wel welcoming my neighbor and witnessing to my neighbor of the love of Christ. You see, Isaiah had the vision. It was given to him when Israel was involved in all kinds of violence and war and things were collapsing all around. God gave Isaiah the image of what God wanted. When the Spirit would come upon the soul with wisdom and knowledge and understanding and good counsel, with piety, with fortitude and fear of offending the Lord who loves us infinitely. That was the vision of the Spirit. And it's not only meant for the Messiah, but the Spirit is to be in each of us, beginning with our baptism. But many times, instead of throwing the garbage out, what do we do? We throw the Holy Spirit out of our lives and we choose the garbage of sin. One cannot dwell with the other. You either have the light or you have the darkness. The world needs to see the light. You know, his father came, he had just gotten a phone in Tanzania to use for his journey and his time here. And wouldn't you know, whatever carrier it is they use, he tells me they use many Chinese companies, wouldn't work here. Brand new phone. So we went to one place to see if we could get it, quote, unlocked and changed over. Nope, can't do it. Frustration. Irritation. Then we have to go to the mecca of all American stores called Walmart, <laughs> which you can imagine shocking father, you know, never seen anything quite li like it. Uh, so much, so much abundance that we, we often take for granted that we have access to so many things so easily, easily so readily. And of course, on a Saturday, in December, you can imagine. I, I was not looking forward to it, let me just put it that way. I would avoid it like the plague, but we had no choice. Anyway, with all of the lines and the people, and I'm praying to the Blessed Mother, please, Lord, Mother, help them move on so we can get this taken care of. And then the complications. We eventually meet a fine fellow, Sergio, who was so helpful and an answer to our prayers. We get through all of this, then we have to go to the checkout, huge lines again, and I've got to get to church for a service at noon here, praying again, get us through, and we meet, wouldn't you know, someone working at the store 
one of the only other East Africans from our parish, Jean-Pierre from Rwanda. God answers prayers. We have to pray to get through it, to keep our minds straight and at ease when we're tempted to lose it. And we make our way. God is with us. God is the light and the hope of the world. We can be easily tempted in this Advent season. You know, Father was telling me they celebrate Christmas only in East Africa on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. He was shocked at all the lights and all of the celebration and all of the music going on everywhere that he's seen so far. We're going through all of this and unfortunately because there's so much excitement, we don't do the proper preparation. We don't really do the Advent work and we just jump right into Christmas already. And so there's a lot of frustration, right? We need to let the light, we need to prepare to allow the light to shine through us so that the vision of Isaiah, that a child, that is to say the childlike one, will lead us forward in the midst of all the lions and the, the adders, you know, the serpents, all the troubles of this world, the light of Christ will shine if we allow Christ to lead us. I conclude with that beautiful text, again in Romans chapter 15, where it says, together may you with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ.